Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Hood. I am Penge and this is a baggage handling tutorial for Airport CEO. So the game came out a short while ago, I've been playing it in the Geek Cupboard, lots of other people have been playing it, but one area where I think people are struggling, and I count myself among that number, is the implementation of the baggage handling service. It's fairly complicated, and the help here in this manual, the conveyor belt system manual, is not particularly brilliant as it stands right now, so I thought I'd put together a little video just to show you what needs to happen in order to get the baggage handling service in. We're not looking at anything clever, we're not looking at the bag scanning and the bag disposal, that kind of stuff, that's a bit more advanced. We're looking at getting in the basic services to just get bag handling services in your airport. So what have we got? We've got a fairly basic airport, it's nothing very exciting. There's some check-in desks here, security, a great big sort of departure lounge if you like. The orangey bit is all secure. This black sort of grey bit here is not secure, as you can tell, because there's the secure exits just here. And we've got three airport stands and a couple of access roads. Nothing overly exciting. Now, we have no staff, apart from the contractor builder guys, there's no staff in the airport apart from the CEO, which obviously is by default already put in the game. So the first thing you need to do if you want to build your baggage handling services is to have a procurement director and a chief operating officer. So you want a procurement director and a COO. So if you press tab and go up to staff and then go up to the board, you'll see that we have the CEO, Tilly Tutorial is sat there. Everywhere else is vacant. So we want a COO. So let's click open for applications on that one. And we want a procurement director. So let's click open for applications on that one. Then you want to go to applicants up in the corner, scroll down to the bottom where the people are applying. So we've got three of each. So let's pick you for the COO job and back down to the bottom we go. For the procurement director, let's pick you, hire you. Now we have a COO on board, a COO and a procurement director. And this means we can now purchase the services required for baggage handling. So now click on economy, click on procurement in the corner and that little message there does say, oh, you need a procurement director to unlock these, but then it goes away, presumably when it works out that we have one. And if we scroll down a little bit, baggage handling service is just here. By enabling baggage handling services, you'll bring your airport to a new operational level. However, they are very expensive. And that's $250,000, that's quarter of a million dollars to simply have the privilege of being able to build them. That doesn't include anything else. There's no buildings or any baggage handling stuff included. That's just to be able to have them in your airport. And it takes 20 in-game airport hours, which is quite a long time. But there we go, that's how long it takes. So let us unlock that right now. There we go, 20 hours and no minutes, 19 hours left. So 0% complete. It's gonna take us a long time. So there are a few things we can do while we wait. You could just sit and wait if you want until it's done. But we are going to put in some sort of foundations, if you like, because we're going to be building various bits and bobs to handle the baggage. One of the things we're going to build is a baggage bay. Now, the baggage bay is three by four foundation tiles. But around the edge of the baggage bay, you want a service road. So we're going to put our baggage bay in a little sort of hangar, if you like. And I think a seven by seven kind of building is the best size for a baggage bay. And we'll see why soon. So I'm going to build mine here. Now, two things you want to bear in mind when you build an area for a baggage bay. One is that you want it to be accessible by a service road. And secondly, you need people to be able to reach it. You need actual staff members to be able to reach the baggage bay. So it's going to need access via roads and also pavements. So I think we build our one. We're going to build our one out here. So we're going to have a seven by seven area like that. So that's going to drop into place. But now we're going to need to get some... Uh, well, first things first, actually. Let's delete this front wall. Let's pause time. We're going to delete this front wall. They don't need that front wall in there. And then the second thing we're going to do, we're going to get a service road, and we are going to build it inside this area, which we've just sort of blueprinted out. So the baggage bay is going to fit in this sort of area here. It's three by four. It's going to fit in the middle. So we're going to build a service road around the edge. So we're going to have six going up, six going up like that, six going up this side, and three going across the top. So now our baggage bay is going to fit into this gap in the middle of our service roads, which means that the trucks that we're going to implement later on can come in off the service road, drive round, pick up their luggage, and drive back out and round. So it makes it a little bit slicker to work. We also now need to think, let's just 
put time onto normal speed, but how to get actual pedestrians there, because we have staff members that are going to need to get in and actually access that building. So we've got a little bit here. As far as I can tell, and I don't know if this is going to be fully implemented in the game or not, the building, the, the access to your baggage bay cannot be from a secure area. I think it has to be an insecure area, but you can designate it as staff only. I think that's how it's working at the moment. So if we do a sidewalk over here, say, so let's just drop a sidewalk in there and another little bit just there. Then we'll get a crosswalk so they can safely cross the road and then drop in a couple of doors, which are in structures. So a door just there and a door just there. And then if we designate, I mean, that area is partly designated staff. I know if we designate this let say a staff area, undesignate that as staff area, so that as a staff area, people should not be able to go into there and walk through and obviously interfere with what's going on. So let's speed time on a little bit as they go and get all the stuff. Another thing we can do as we now wait for this is to employ some ramp agents because we're going to need ramp agents in order to work on the baggage bay. The baggage bay lives up here. So we need to get some ramp agents in. So if you go tab, and then go to staff, and then go to applicants, you can filter everything. So let's filter it by ramp agents. Now the baggage bay itself needs four ramp agents to work, but six makes it far better. So let's hire six. So just one, two, three, four, five, six. And obviously a couple more drop in as well, which is fine. Do you know what? Let's hire eight. Why not, eh? And yeah, more, more come in. You've always got applications open in fact it's refilling up very quickly indeed another thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have an area built for baggage claim because when we've actually researched baggage services we're going to have a new zone down here we're gonna have a new area and it's going to be baggage claim now i have this area here this dark gray area it's not secure we're going to have baggage claim in here so it's going to sit in here you need an area like that in your airport the baggage claim zone itself the area here it doesn't have to be massive it doesn't have to be huge I, I don't know the exact minimum or maximum size it can be but you know you want to be able to make sure you can get as a luggage carousel or two possibly in if you're getting extravagant and doing extra stuff so until they've done that there's nothing much else to do there is one more thing we can do and that is by ourselves a vehicle depot or depot because we need the little service trucks we need the service trucks that are going to carry the bags to and from the airplanes so vehicle depot needs to go on a service road we have a convenient service road just here so let's drop that in just like that and we have to wait for the vehicle depot to be built before we can then actually go and buy ourselves some little vehicles to go in it so it looks like they've finished working on that bit which is good and I think the guys are just running off to get these stuff to build the vehicle depot. So let's wait until they finish that. So that's built in readiness for when all the baggage services stuff is complete. We can then get ourselves a little vehicle or two to go inside it. But now let's just check what we're left with. So this is uh, economy procurement. How long is left? Still, even though we've built a big thing here and built stuff to cross the roads and built a great big kind of vehicle hangar, we still have eight and a half hours left to wait. So um, yeah. Go make a cup of tea, go make a cup of coffee, make something to eat. This takes a long, long time. So we shall come back when that is done. And after what seems like an eternity, baggage handling service is now unlocked. The product is unlocked. So we can now go and do baggage handling things. So the first thing we can do, we can scroll to the top. We can get ourselves a crafter service truck. We've got a conveyor belt system. We've got the road checkpoint. We've got the vehicle depot. We can change that quantity to two. Let's order two of those. So they should arrive. Oh, yes, time is paused. So as soon as you move time on, that will start kicking in. I think they just appear not quite instantly, but very quickly. There you go. So two of the little crafter service trucks, which ferry the stuff around, will appear. And we also have ourselves some items. So we now have baggage belts and a baggage bay. So what you want to do now is you want to click on baggage bay and it will bring up the baggage bay just here. So the baggage bay, you can't, it's hard to see on this. The bit at the, let's zoom in, the bit at the bottom where it branches out is where on the right hand side where the luggage comes in, so where your bags come in from the check-in desk and the bit on the left hand side with the straight arrows pointing downwards is where the luggage then goes out and goes out into the sort of baggage claim area. You want those ideally pointing toward where your airport is. If you had it the other way round, 
it would be a bit annoying because you're going to have to have baggage carousel things looping back round on themselves. And, it, you know, it's expensive and it's a bit slower. So we might as well have that that way round because my uh, luggage claim area is going to be here and my check-in desks are over there. So if we put that in like that, it costs 10 grand for them to put it into place. They now need to build the baggage bay. So let's hurry time on. You can also see our little luggage truck things driving in. There's a pair of them. They'll go into the little hangar. Right now... We can zone out our baggage claim area. So this is going to be quite a big baggage claim area, but it doesn't matter. I don't know what the minimum size is. Let's check. It's something like three by three seems to be the smallest size you can have. And that's absolutely fine. But I'm building a bigger one like that for whatever reason. So that is now in. So we have a baggage claim area. What we need to do now is we need to wait for those guys to finish building the baggage bay. So let's just wait for the little bit to scurry in. There we go. It appears pretty much instantly. What we need to do now is place the baggage belts. So we need to connect the check-in desks with this bay just here. And we do that by going down to items, getting baggage belts. And there are two options, the overground belt and the underground belt. For the bits behind our check-in desks, we want the overground belt. So click that, get a bit closer to your belt, to your check-in desks. And you'll see that there are arrows running across the cursor. So we want to rotate that round to make sure the arrows, which is the direction of the belt, are going the right way. And we want that to go along here, behind the check-in desks, let's say to just there. So we're going to have it to just there. And we can see that, there, that that goes along that way. Now one thing we can do to help is press this toggle conveyor belt button at the bottom. It shows us the arrows, it shows us the direction of where things are going. And yeah, um, that belt looks like it's connected, these looks like they're not. I'm fairly certain they are connected. Now. We want to go underground. So we want to go on baggage belts and go to underground belt. Because we're now going to start going under the ground. The uh, colour of the arrows for an underground belt is orange. And we shall move that across. So we're rotating it to make sure that our arrows are pointing the right way each time. We want that to go up toward our conveyor. Uh, toward our little bay up there. So I think that's about right. Possibly one more over like that I think. So the arrow is still coming round. And then, again, rotate it round so it goes up. And these, perfect. These are going to go in. So this is feeding in onto there like that. And you can see they've got like a bit where it comes up from underground onto the overground bit, which is fine. So the builder guy is going to go off and build those underground baggage sort of carousel, little sort of terminal things, whatever they are, baggage belts. Now, this is uh, where we need to connect this outgoing bit. So the bags that have arrived on a plane are then put onto here, they need to loop round and go into here, into our baggage claim area. So we need to do the same again. We're going to have click that, go to underground belts. The belts cannot cross over each other. You cannot have an underground belt and an overground belt crossing over each other. You can't have two underground or two overground belts crossing over each other. So you have to kind of make a fairly kind of good path about where these things are going to go. So yeah, my one is not ideal here with the way it's worked, but that's absolutely fine because all we can do for this is we can go left a couple of squares, then up a couple of squares, then right along a bit. And then we can set one going down, all the way down into our baggage claim area, which is fine. And all that's underground. Now we want the overground bit again. So we want to go back to baggage belts and overground. And you have to make, as far as I can tell, your own kind of little carousels. So the, baggage, the bags are going to come along here and then we want to make a a little carousel ourselves, rotating it round every time. So now it's going left, then it's going right, and as you can see it gives it the nice curved corners on the blueprint. So now the bags will come along, let's just tick that again, come along the orange bit, pop out onto this conveyor, and they will just keep going round and round and round and round forever until someone claims them. So lovely, we need to speed time on for them to finish all these things because there's quite a lot for them to do. Yeah, this button is very useful. Remember the toggle conveyor button. It's very handy to see where your conveying systems are and what directions they're going in. And we can now follow the flow of the luggage. So a bit of luggage will come in here at check-in. It'll go along here on green, overground, goes to underground where it's orange, goes here, and it ends up on this side here for people to put into the carts to take to the planes. On the other side, the cars will come in from the planes, the little sort of trucks, drop off the luggage onto these, it loops round, goes back over under here, along here, and pops up onto our conveyor. And that is absolutely fine. We've got the vehicle depots in. We've got the service trucks in. The final step now is to connect our baggage bay to the check-in desks just here. 
the baggage claim area just here and any uh, little sort of gates or terminals or indeed stands as they call them uh, that want to use it. So in this airport it's only small we want everything to use our one baggage area. So terminals let's connect let's connect this up first let's connect the check-in desks connect baggage bay you literally click on the check-in desk click connect baggage bay a big line appears you move the cursor over the baggage bay you want we've only got one you click and it links it it's as simple as that so let us connect the rest of our baggage uh, the rest of our sorry check-in desks to the baggage bay so let's do that that's the fourth this is the fifth and the final one so once that's connected up that's good we then want to connect our baggage claim area in much the same way you click it there is a connect baggage bay button you connect it up like that the stands here are more or less the same so this one will be fine there is a connect baggage bay button you do exactly the same thing click like that this one here you will notice does not have a connect baggage bay button that is because this stand is not accepting commercial flights now commercial flights accept baggage um, general aviation flights do not but we want all of ours to accept commercial flights so we're going to switch that on and connect the baggage bay and this one here at the bottom we're also going to accept commercial flights and that is going to be connected to the baggage bay as well i think the way they've done this is so you can have multiple baggage bays if you like connecting different bits of the airport so you can have an arrivals uh, sort of area and a departure area you can have different uh, terminals if you like so you can have one terminal that's entirely departures or whatever however you want to work it but i quite like the flexibility they've put in with the uh, with the you know the connections to your baggage bay so now we are nearly done as far as i'm aware we are nearly finished what we now need to do we need to click on the baggage bay we're going to up the amount of ramp agents per side to three so there's going to be three on this side three on the other side so three dealing with inbound luggage three dealing with outbound luggage we are going to activate the cargo bay and all these red lines should go a kind of white color to show that it's fine if you press that and something isn't linked it does tell you a box pops up and says well it's not linked to any gates or it's not linked to a check-in desk or whatever but uh yeah as you can see our one has gone white and it's all fine this is very encouraging uh, what we now need to do uh, is go to the operations panel so we need to go to the operations panel by pressing tab go to operations we need to switch on the ramp agent service so we switch on ramp agent service which should summon the ramp agent fellas there they are the green suited people the green tops they're going to run through here they're going to go through our staff only area along here through the staff only area and get to just here where they work let's speed time on let's see them all come in lovely so they're all waiting to work they're all pending being there and we now need to switch on the baggage handling system toggle so now we're going to do this let's switch that on lovely now that's on there are no errors nothing went wrong there's no exclamation marks anywhere that is it currently our airport is closed so let's open our airport. What I'll do is, because we've got literally nothing set up, I shall get uh, some flights in and we'll just have a look at how the baggage thing works. We'll follow the first flight we get through, the baggage handling process. So let's switch the airport to open, which is good. Open or security, we definitely don't want to do that. Uh, and I'm just going to get a contract for some flights and we'll watch the luggage come in from the first flight. Okay. Here comes our first plane coming in. It's coming in. I don't know which gate it's going to go to, which uh, stand. It's probably one of the big ones. It's going to be one of the big ones. Just as I, uh, just as that thing slowly comes in, one thing you can do, if these guys, if the little uh, agents have a kind of, it look, it's a red sort of speech bubble there with a ziggy zaggy black lining. It means they are unable to make their way to where they need to be. And I don't know if that applies to everybody else as well in the game. But yeah, so it's a red speech bubble with a kind of black ziggy zaggy line with nodes on it. Means we are stuck. We can't get to where we need to go. Please sort that out. And it's to do with pathing and making sure they're going to secure or non-secure areas and all that kind of stuff. Right. So the plane is here. So if we speed time on. There we go. The luggage truck has come out. Let's speed time on a little bit. Let's just hurry it on. We should see the luggage eventually come out. Yep. The little service agent guys are coming in. They're taking the luggage off the plane and putting it into the service truck. There's quite a lot of luggage. There it goes. Loads of luggage. Crikey's. It drives up here. There it goes. It turns round and <laughs> comes into here. Probably not the most effective way to do it. They load it onto here. It's then going to come out here. Now, it doesn't show that it's on these, but I'm fairly certain it is. Bear in mind that this is an early access game. So, yeah, it should all be in there, which is fine. And then... 
these are the ones that are now going on holiday. They're going to catch the plane. There we go. The truck drives out, drives into the thing. And if we click on here, we can see the turnaround monitor. Baggage loading in progress. It is now going up. 3 out of 55. Everyone is boarding as the baggage is going on. And we should hopefully see that. there. And they're not the quickest, are they? But we hope... There we go. 38 out of 38 baggage loaded. And that's absolutely fine. That plane is fully loaded. It is now ready to depart. And that is how you set up the baggage services for your airport. Now, yeah, it's not the most straightforward of things. It is not the most straightforward of things at all. So hopefully that has helped you in some way. If you liked it, please do leave a like. And we're going to be playing more Airport CEO in the Geek Cupboard. So please do subscribe. I would be most honoured and delighted if you could do so. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard. And I will see you next time. You can be the last accounting office. City tax offices. Boo, tax man. Yeah, you look busy. Is it a quiet day at Bedrock Insurance, is it? Is he going to use the stairs? Or is he going to be a lazy beggar? Yeah, you lazy ass. And all the lights are on. And I noticed that everyone has left their lights on. I'm paying for this electricity, you gets.